joining me now to discuss is Lance LaRusso. He's a lawyer, author, and former police officer himself. Thanks for being here tonight, Lance. Thanks for having me. Because this story really makes my blood boil. It's the same story over and over again. Activist judges letting absolute monsters back out onto our streets. How is this man not behind bars when he encountered Officer French that tragic night? You can fill in a different city name. You can fill in a different officer murdered. You can fill in a different date and time. But this is a story we have heard numerous, numerous times. And it gets down to avoiding personal responsibility, trying to find a way to blame everything but somebody's criminal behavior. We don't have a gun problem in this country. We don't have a firearms availability problem. We have a rampant criminality problem, and that's what killed Ella French. And now I'm also hearing that actually the straw purchaser, the guy who allegedly bought the gun that was then given to the Morgan brothers, who they purchased it, purchased it from him, and then they used it in this tragic shooting that we saw over the past week, and that the straw purchaser now seems like he's going to be getting out on bond because of, you know, another judge letting him out. And as you were saying, how are we supposed to take these cities like Chicago seriously when they talk about gun violence? And they're so quick on the trigger, I, I guess, excuse the pun here, to turn innocent law-abiding gun owners and making them out to be like they're the criminals. But then the real criminals, like these straw purchasers and others, well, they just keep turned back, being turned back out onto the streets. Well, and it's interesting, aside from the demonization of law enforcement that just doesn't work, they're lies. People lie about the, the use of force, lie about the frequency of the use of force. We now have people that are refusing to tackle the difficult problems as to why some of these people repeatedly commit crimes. And for example, we have crimes on the books that make it a felony, a federal crime in addition to be a straw purchaser, yet we don't punish that and then we wonder why the criminality continues. I know, and then just looking at this whole situation, I just saw a few days ago, actually, that the mother of, of the suspect, of the suspected cop killer, Monte Morgan, that she actually somehow was able to evade some security at the hospital where he's being held for his own injury sustained during the gunfight with police. Uh, and she breaks through, and then one of the cops tries to stop her, and she allegedly kicks him in the groin, keeps attacking, resists arrest, and now she's facing her own charges of trespassing. Uh, does it seem like the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree on this one? Well, what's interesting is, you know, those charges, she could have been charged with felonies, but once again, well, let's charge her with misdemeanors because she's upset. People get upset about a lot of things. I get upset. You know what? I'm upset that Ella French is dead. I'm really upset, but I'm not out committing crimes about it. And the, when we over and over again excuse criminality, realize these things are going to continue to happen. And, you know, this whole issue with the, uh, with the bagpipes and the ceremony and everything else, the mayor needs to understand that those officers the next day put that same uniform on that Ella French was wearing when she was murdered, and they still went out there and protected the public. And for that, they deserve everybody's respect. And, you know, 20 minutes, time frames, the bottom line she was complaining about, it is perfectly acceptable to stop the world when a hero gets murdered. And know, talk to me about some of the, the all the ritual and the ceremony that goes into these processions when there is someone who is fallen in the line of duty for, for law enforcement. Because as you're saying, it's a crazy controversy now that, that broke out that the bagpipes were cut short, the whole procession was cut short to save about 20 minutes. But for all the for all the other law enforcement who were there that day watching the procession and for the families themselves, how important is it for all these ceremonial rituals to be hit on the dot for these families to to you know to be able to even sleep at night? Yeah, and you hit the nail on the head, and I appreciate you mentioning it's not just for the officers, it's for the families. When an officer dies, uh, and I've been to far too many law enforcement funerals, when an officer dies, there are certain rituals that, yes, benefit the officers and let them know they're appreciated, but that is an opportunity for the public to express their wishes, the processions that we see, the, the bagpipes, the ceremonies, the firefighters putting an American flag over an arch when they come into the church for their burial, all of those things give closure to the family. So saying that it was solely for the officers is just nonsense. I know, and then I guess Mayor Lori Lightfoot was really showing her true colors. Well, she has many times when it comes to not liking law enforcement in her own city, but accusing people of wanting to hijack the funeral when we when it comes to making sure that everything was hit on the dot, all the eyes were, you know, all the eyes were dotted and all the T's were crossed on this procession that was cut short with all the bagpipes. And she was accusing the people who wanted to make sure it was done done formally and successfully. She accused them of wanting to hijack the situation. No, Lori Lightfoot, that's you and your cronies. But Lance, thank you so much for joining us tonight on this really tragic update. Thanks for having me.